friends, welcome back to Touch Base. We are up and ready for another podcast with you guys today. I'm excited to bring in Jason Anders. He is the Vice President of Quest Platform Development. And so, Jason, uh, welcome to the show. Welcome. Uh, glad to have you here. here. It's great to be here. I've watched them, all the other podcasts. They've been terrific so far, so glad to be a part of it. Yeah, I'm glad to have you here. I think you're going to bring a, an interesting uh, insight into all the things that are going on at Quest because you do something that may not necessarily be out in front with the products, but kind of building the platforms a little bit behind the scenes. But uh, before we get there, I, I would like to give you a chance to tell us a little bit about yourself, kind of give us an introduction to who you are. Yeah, sure. So um, I've been in Lubbock. I'm a newcomer, I, you might say. I've been in Lubbock about three years. Okay. Uh, my wife is mostly from here. Um, her family is, were, has been here more than 20 or so years, but uh, I've been around. One of the things that I think takes people back a little bit uh, from me is that I've so I've moved more than, at this point, probably 45 or 50 times in my oh, life. Oh, man. Right. So I've lived in 16 different states in the U.S. and dozens of cities within those states. And most recently, prior to being here, my wife and I were in the, the D.C. area. I was working at uh, Fannie Mae, living in Northern Virginia, and, and we moved here. Wow. So you might ask, why? Why? <laughs> right? How do you go from D.C. to Lubbock? Well, uh, first of all, Lubbock's a great place. Yeah. It's, Terrific destination, right? But we came here because we, we have a, our, we have two children, uh, Jake and Olivia. Olivia is six years old, and she has cerebral palsy. Mm -hmm. So long story short, we moved here for the family support, right? D.C. is a beautiful area, um, but it is not a convenient area. And, and some, some aspects about it were very tough, and we felt kind of isolated on an island. So we yeah. moved back here to have the, the family support around, and it's been terrific. And... Uh, Knowing that we were going to come back here, right? Um, you know, reaching out to some different people, and uh, my wife's father uh, used to be the president of the Chamber of Commerce, so he knew Dave Marsinkowski very well, and they had some conversations about some of the things that Dave wanted to get kickstarted uh, from a Quex perspective. We weren't Quex then; it was just Madera, but uh, that led to uh, having conversations with Dave and uh, Dave Gillis and Sean, and here we are. Yeah. So I've been here for almost, uh, actually a little over three years now, I think. Yeah, so tell me a little bit about what you did in your previous work experience. It kind of gives us a little bit of a jump to you being the guy that, that oversees our Quest platform development. So I've been in IT space for going on three decades now. Oh, wow. It's been a long time. Uh, from the infrastructure side of the house to software development side of the house, um, I was an executive at USAA, which is a large financial services organization based out of San Antonio. I was an executive at Fannie Mae. Uh, helping them in, in some of their IT spaces, trying to build some new capabilities there. And so it was just kind of a natural fit, right? Software development was something that was going to be core to what we do at Quest. It's one of our three major lines of business, if you will. Uh, and so I've, I've just, I feel pretty comfortable in that space. I've done a lot in that space. And so it, it seemed to be a good fit. Yeah, I like it. Uh, so let's talk about this a little bit. Your your title is officially uh, the Vice President of Quext Platform Development. And when I hear your title, I think my brain can run in a bunch of different directions. Uh, but why don't you just give us a like general, like, okay, here's actually what this is and here's what me and my team do. So if you wanted to boil it down, it's really software development, okay? right? So it, it should be, not that it should be, it could be, Vice President of Software Development. Mm. I'm responsible for most of the software development that happens at Quext. And that, in, from a new co perspective, Quext websites, digital human, building the new property management system, integrating all those things, integrating in with all of our third parties, uh, with Conservice, with Viva, with anybody that we do business with, right? All of that from a software development perspective is here. So you would say, well, uh, well why don't you just call it? software development instead of platform development and so that's a, a good question right i'm glad you asked <laughs> we uh it helps keep us focused on really the end goal the end goal isn't to just build property management software right to us that's just the beginning that's that's table stakes those are the first core products that we need to put in in the market to give us the foothold to really start doing fun stuff we really want to drive this industry forward in the future we want to build um, integrations into almost everybody, right? We almost want to build uh, a marketplace of multifamily services and capabilities where our customers can pick and choose. So you come to Quest and you can 
You don't have to buy huge bundles of stuff. Uh, you can pick and choose. What do you want to do? Maybe it doesn't even have to be a Quex product. Maybe we integrate with a, with a competitor and you can use the competitor's product that integrates nicely with us. Wow. So the platform is that. It's, it's this base marketplace. If you were to look at uh, the Apple Store, for example, right? The Apple Store sells a bunch of software, but underneath of that is a software infrastructure that allows people to sell their software. And so that's a platform. And for us, we want Quex to become a platform. And what does that look like when we're fully done? I don't know that, I think we're gonna let it, we're gonna let it do what it do, yeah. uh, so to speak. And we'll find out where that takes us. But by having that title of platform development versus software development, it keeps us reminded that that's really the end game and that's where we're going. Yeah, so, how, so, so when you start talking about biting this off in chunks, we have uh, four primary products that you can go look at right now on the Quext uh, website. Mm -hmm. Where do you kind of see that getting bigger as far as the Quext stuff that, that might be getting bigger? Yeah, absolutely. So Digital Human, IoT, Connect, and Quext websites. Those four products are available today. They, um, Quest websites and Digital Human are already fully moved in, if you will, to that platform mm -hmm. and fully integrated into that platform. Quest IoT will become fully integrated into that platform probably by the end of the first quarter next year. It'll be seamlessly integrated. And Quest Connect um, will start early next year and, and we'll see, we have some third party things to work out there. But each one of those products is what we call an MVP, which stands for Minimum Viable Product. That's version 1.0 of that product. It's just enough to make a positive impact on the market and to be just enough of a product that people might want to buy it. But every one of those products has a roadmap of very cool stuff that we want to start doing with it, we want to add to it. We want to start building some of these capabilities that people have been talking about for, for years that haven't just haven't materialized anywhere yeah. yet. Um, we're going to build all of those things and, and they're all going to play a role, right? I'll give you an example of something uh, we'll push for us soon is everybody talks about this fully self-guided tour capability. So you go on a website and you see a property that you might want to visit and you have a conversation with Mia or Jordan and you set up a tour. And so when you set up that tour for 4 p.m. next Friday on 4 p.m. next Friday, that community's got all of the IoT locks that sort of thing, and that lock is automatically credentialed. It unlocks for you at 4 p.m. You let yourself in. You have a kiosk there, maybe on the, the kitchen counter or something, and Mia and Jordan are there waiting for you to be able to answer questions that you might have as you're walking through the apartment. Wow. And maybe you want to apply for that. You're like, I love it, let's apply for it. Then you touch that kiosk and you spend 10 minutes doing an application. 20 minutes later, you have a signed lease. Mm -hmm. Right from from front to back, start to finish, completely touch free. Uh, all of that is within reach, right? Yeah. So all of that stuff are roadmap items that we're going to be bringing all of this to, to converge together into to those types of capabilities. So what? So you so we start talking specific products, whether it's from Quex, and then you mentioned just a moment ago, like possibly being a marketplace for others. Mm -hmm. What does it look like to build an infrastructure where all of that can kind of happen in the same place? So if you talk to one of the IT guys, they'll throw around. Uh, tech, one of the technical terms they'll give you is something called microservices. Okay. So when you look at uh, Quext property management, and Quext property management, we'll call that an application, but it's not really one application. Um, you might think of it as to say that right beneath the surface, well, there's, there's an application to manage all of your buildings and units and, and pools and parking lots and all of that stuff, right? The physical infrastructure. Then there's another application where you're going to manage all of your leases and your renewals and your move-ins and move-outs and sodas. And there's a third application where you're going to manage all of your accounting. Accounts receivable, accounts payable, general ledger. Maybe there's even a fourth application where you say this is our front-facing resident portal. And you're going to manage all, a lot of things with service requests and notifications and online payments and um, selling, upselling value-added services and stuff through the resident portal. So now it feels like five applications, but it's not really five applications. A microservice architecture is one where you take every little con small contiguous piece of functionality and that's really its own application. So Quex property management is actually um, in the neighborhood of 70 different applications. And we build it that way and all those 70 applications feel like they connect into one application, but the advantage is I can take a piece of it. I can take move outs 
where I can take the soda process. The soda process is its own little micro application, its own little microservice. And I can pull it out and put in a vendor's microservice application right there instead. So they, we build everything inside of Quest, almost like Lego blocks. So here's our Lego block, right? But if we wanted to, uh, if a given community wanted to start using a third party service instead of the default Quest service in this space, I can just pull out that Lego block, connect in that third party service in that space and keep moving from there. Yeah. So it makes it, a, it's, a, it's more complicated to get it started. Mm -hmm. It takes a little longer to build it out that way, but it enables you uh, the complete freedom to really kind of mix and match pieces together as you move forward. Yeah. And so we're architecting the entire solution that way. Yeah. So I think one of the things that's interesting in this, and I, I, I think it'd be, I would not be doing my job if I didn't ask this question, right? So we look at we look at technology today, and technology feels like it's changing so fast. It feels sometimes like we're a little bit overwhelmed, and then there are people, there are also those of us who are also kind of looking at this and going, okay, I don't want to learn any more technology because it feels too much. How is what you're doing making life more efficient for the user and, and making it a little bit easier for the user to take on uh, new technologies? Well, I'll tell you, um, <laughs> Nobody likes this answer. One of the answers is uh, <laughs> too bad. Yeah, <laughs> there's no getting away from it. Right, right. This technology's not going away. You're right, and it, it is is never going to stop changing. Yeah, and so, um, but but there are a couple of different answers. You know, one of the in my life, I've had this conversation so many times. Being in the IT space, talking to business users of the applications that we're building, you know, I'm, I'm tired of everything being changed mm. on me. Right, and part of that is that phrase. Um, feeling like the changes are always pushed upon you, right? So if you're a person that feels like I'm tired of changes being pushed upon me, well, I would recommend um, speaking up, maybe getting involved, having some opinions, because it's much easier to adopt the change if it was your idea to begin with. Sure. Right? So get involved. Give us your opinions. Tell me what you think the software should do. How would you mm -hmm. like to see the software behave? Send me some emails um, because it's a lot easier to accept the change if you had some input into how it was right. changed. And right. I, I would give that advice to anybody. I give that advice to my mom mm -hmm. all the time, for yeah. example. Uh, that being said, I will tell you with Quext, we are putting a lot of time and emphasis on the, the way this, the user interface looks and behaves and acts. And we've got an entire design steering committee, right? This isn't like one person deciding, this is what I'm gonna make this screen look like. We've got an entire committee where we look at every single screen, every single page. We have a, a, a philosophy of brilliantly simple. We try to keep every page um, underwhelming versus overwhelming. Yeah. If that makes sense to say, if you look at a lot of property management systems, you'll open up one screen, the first screen, and you're like, you just see stuff all over the screen, just shotgunned and spray painted everywhere. And you're like, I'm not even sure where to find the one piece that I need. Mm -hmm. That's not going to happen with Quest. It's, I, I promise you, it's going to be far easier to use and far more intuitive and simple to use than, than any property management system you've seen. Now, almost any other software products you've used, right? Yeah. Apple has a terrific reputation for this sort of thing. And, and we're, you know, we're inspired by the way Apple is doing things and making things uh, a lot simpler for their users to use. So we're taking that approach with absolutely every screen that we put together with yeah. Quest. Well, and I, I think you said something, I want to highlight this because you've said it and every other person who has come on specifically working with various softwares or products that Quest is putting together that all of you want to hear from those out in the field who are using your products. Yep. Yeah, that, that you guys are wanting to hear their feedback in order to integrate that into how you even design those types of things. Uh, I, I really appreciate that. I mean, literally every one of the guys who's come on to talk about it has said something <laughs> in that vein. Uh, and so yeah. let, let's talk about that for a little bit. How does your specific department work with the other departments that we have already existing within Quest? How do you guys kind of navigate those relationships? Well, so the other departments we have in Quest, obviously we're in constant conversations with uh, with marketing and like the current tools that we have out there right now are digital human and quest websites and those are heavy marketing tools mm -hmm. so marketing is in almost every conversation that we have and we send it by them and before something even hits hits the market we've been giving it to marketing to actually do the testing right they're doing the testing they're doing early testing they're doing medium testing they're doing late testing and they're giving a, a ton of feedback that says 
uh, you know, this needs to be better or this doesn't feel right or I'm not, this isn't intuitive enough to me and I'm not sure what to do on this page. And so we're trying to go directly to the user group that's going to be using this product and say, give us the feedback. Mm -hmm. You know, we're getting close to finishing the new accounting module, for example, for the new property management system. And so accounting is, we've got two or three meetings a week with accounting where they just literally just go through every page and you know what, do your job, right? Go be an accountant and tell me how this feels. Mm -hmm. uh, where could this be better? Where is this frustrating? Where is this making you feel like, I'm not sure how to do this now and we're, and, and we're gonna make it easier. So we do a lot of that, a, yeah. lot, of, a lot of focus grouping with uh, Madera employees. So one of the advantages that we have that maybe other software companies don't have is we have 50 or 60 communities out there that use this stuff and are going right. to use this stuff. So we want that feedback, right? And we get that feedback. The development, the developers, they love it. They love the immediate feedback because if they put something out and it isn't quite right, and it, and it doesn't take an hour for us to get an email from somebody saying, this isn't working right. Mm -hmm. um, working in other places isn't like that, right? The life of a developer is oftentimes you spend a lot of time building something and then in a big company, a corporation, you don't even know where it goes. You don't even know if it's being used. That's not the case here, right? We we put something out and people are using it the moment it's being put out and we get a lot of instant feedback. Yeah. So we, we live, we thrive off of it. Yeah, that, that, that partnership and, and, and kind of back and forth between Madeira and Quext is is a huge benefit to you Tremendous guys and, and, to, and even to us, those who are in the field, yeah. uh, getting to see great new technology. Tremendous advantage. And so on behalf of the developers, let me uh, apologize to all of Madeira <laughs> um, because I know you guys have had to do some things, right, and use some software that wasn't necessarily really ready for the street yet. And at the same time, so I'm sorry that you had to go through that, but thank you, right? Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for spending the time to go through that because you're going to love Quext. Mm -hmm. I mean, it it is better than Nuco in absolutely every meaningful, impactful way. It's better than Nuco, and, and there's no way that I would have guessed, I could have possibly guessed, how should I make this software? Yeah. There's no way I could have done it without Madera telling me how to do it. Yeah. No, I like that. That's that's very cool. I, I think one of the things that's interesting, too, about what we, you and I have gotten a chance to talk about even just a, a what was it, a week or two ago. Um, so Quext is much bigger than just the internal focus groups, right? As far as all that's going into this, you've got developers across the world who you yep. are working with. So Talk to me a little bit about that as far as how all of these people from all these places are coming together to, to work with you. Yeah, so it, it's kind of fun when I get to talk about the scope of the operation because Quext is a global company. We have, we have only about eight or 10 hardcore Quext employees, like real Quext employees. And the rest of it is we work with software development partners, other companies that all they do is software development, right? And so we have six different companies that we're working with right now, and their people are in, let's see, with the sixth, I want to say we're in 11 different con countries. Mm -hmm. uh, we're on four continents, and we're represent, we represent 15 or 16 time zones at this point. So absolutely every hour of the day, somebody's coding software for Quext. Yeah. We are everywhere, right? We have uh, so many different first languages, English is a second or even a third language for many of our development team. Um, and so that's part of the fun is, you know, people in Costa Rica, talking to people in Belarus who need a meeting with people in India, talk to the guys in Singapore, and we have some stateside, and even the company that's in Belarus, well, they're in Poland and Belarus and Kazakhstan, and they're spread across Eastern Europe, and they've got their own time zone challenges, let alone those that they talk about us. And so how do you bring all of that together? Well, I mean, so first of all, those that's about 60 developers. So those 60 developers are working on, I want to say, somewhere between 90 and 100 different projects right now. Some of those projects are small and some are, are big, great big projects. But we've got more than 90 individual projects being handled by those 60 developers today in flight. Yeah. So it's quite a, it's quite an operation. And I do always want to give you a chance to champion your team and some of the people that you're getting a chance to work with. So, I mean, whoever you want to mention, and I maybe can't mention everybody, but just, just. Yeah. yeah. You know, our, our teams have just been great. Um, we've got, so, you know, some of our cats are, are so smart and dedicated to what they're doing. One of them actually literally is a cat. Yeah. Uh, so, 
Um, so Kat Ramos, I think a, a lot of the Madeira people have, have spoken to Kat. She's helping them with a lot of their, their mm -hmm. issues that they have today. Uh, I think she's tired of all the cat puns. Yeah, that's right probably so true. I, I take it a break. I take it a break on cat puns for a while. I don't think she thinks they're funny. Uh, she's been just terrific with all the mm -hmm. data work that she's done with them. She's absolutely outstanding. Um, Juan Martinez, uh, you know, Juan came to us as a young developer, and right about the time Dave Marcinkowski said, "Hey, we have this digital human thing. I want you guys to take a look at it and see what you can do with this." And none of us really had anything to do, any idea what to do with it. Uh, and Juan was like, well, let me take a crack at it. And, you know, a year later, we had Mia up and running on the first properties. That guy has taken so much initiative on his shoulders, right, and so borne so much of the burden to say, I'm going to learn this and I'm going to figure it out. I think he's I think he's taken in the two or three years he's been here, he, he took his first three days off like mm. a, a month ago. <laughs> he's just been, been tirelessly dedicated to this. Yeah. Um, and then Chris Allen, Chris Funk, I, if you guys haven't met those uh, those two individuals, they are lead developer and are, are lead data architect. They're in absolutely everything. Absolutely everything, right? And so uh, startups go that way. Yeah. As, especially in the tech space, you tend to wear a lot of hats. And so our people wear those hats with, with aplomb, right? With dignity, mm -hmm. with poise, with great customer service. I, I couldn't be more proud of the team that we have. Yeah. And without giving a, a specific shout out necessarily to all the third parties, I'll probably share this podcast with them. Yeah, right? I tell them all the time, right? We have uh, our partner, Oktara in Costa Rica, has been just amazing to work with. Uh, terrific teammates. And our partner, Clickatech, uh, they've been, they started with us in the IoT space and they continue to help Trey on some of those IoT things, but they built out our entire AWS ecosystem that we're using today. And they've just been amazing to work with. And we've just brought on some new partners that uh, are going to start with some some smaller projects and and see if they're ready to grow into bigger projects as well. Yeah. So it's been absolutely it's just been it's been a terrific, a, a great ride. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Man, I just want to thank you so much for for coming on the yeah, show. It's my pleasure. And, and talking with everybody. I know that uh, it's it, with five companies across. Uh, you know, so many different uh, places. It's it's oftentimes one, we wonder like, wait, what are those guys actually doing? And and so it's great to have people like yourself come on and, and talk through this. So thank you yeah, so much so for coming. I, you know, I apologize if anything got a little bit too technical. Uh, but if you want any of that explained, shoot me an email. I'm yeah. be happy to take anybody through it. No, thank you so much uh, to our Madeira family. Thank you guys so much for watching. We appreciate you being a part of this. Um, and we'll have another episode for you shortly. So you guys have a great day.